Growing up as a kid of the 90s, this Asian automaker was always being joked about. Cheap, ugly, trash, unreliable, and any slur you could possibly imagine being thrown at this brand and their dorky models. They even went bankrupt in 1997. I'm talking about Kia, the now juggernaut automaker from South Korea, who is on an 11 month record breaking streak. <laughs> who would have thought that the brand that entered the country with the Kia Sophia would be crushing it here in 2023. Look at that, I'm even getting a little Saturn vibes on the back of this guy. This was back when they were heavily invested in by Ford. Then they went bankrupt in 1997. Hyundai comes in, swoops them up, and the rest is history essentially at that point. They build a ton of vehicles here in North America, the Sorento, the K5, well, that could be going away here soon, uh, the, the Telluride, and the Sportage, and they will be building more vehicles here. We know the Kia EV9 fully electric vehicle will be built here in just a short amount of time. Some summer 2024, so about a year from now. But check this out, going over to the Kia media room. Fast growing Kia streak of consecutive year over year increases reaches 11 months. Eight Kia models post year over year increase in the first six months of 2023. So the first half of 2023 is over already. And I will be giving you guys a full wrap up of first half and quarter two results of all the major automakers that I feature here on the channel. That will be coming probably Monday, Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday with the holiday thrown in there. So stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed to the bell icon because you don't want to miss what other automakers are up to. But Key is ahead of the ball here, seemingly in front of everyone, not only with this press release, but also with their sales. Now, Tesla's in their own category altogether, almost off operating in their own vacuum apart from uh, traditional OEMs. But anyway, Key is electrified offerings up 40% over first half of 2022. And Kia had a pretty damn good 2022. And SUV sales increasing 25%. So their first half volume is nearly 400,000 vehicles up 18% over the first half of 2022. So if we look at Kia sales, look what happened in 2008, the financial crisis, they went down a little bit. Then look at this monumental rise in 2012. Here in 20, well, last year in 2022, 666,000. But look at what they're pacing this year. 788,000 if you just double what they posted in the first half. And they're pacing record levels. Look, 2021 is the best year ever with over 700,000 units. They're pacing nearly 800,000 units here in 2023. All right, here are the eight models that are kicking butt and taking names. The Carnival. Well, I know the minivan segment's super hot. There's an extra long waiting list uh, for just about every minivan out there, especially the 37 mile per gallon that I just uh, reviewed Sienna. And since there is such a waiting line for those, people are flooding over to the Carnival. Now, last year, the Carnival wasn't being produced in high volume. I think there was some sort of uh, microchip or some sort of part supply shortage for the Carnival. That looks to be loosening up here as they're soaking up market share in the minivan segment. Seltos as well had a big drop last year up massively 64 percent and this is a vehicle this could be their number one seller potentially maybe not in america but around the world the seltos is that subcompact crossover in the same segment with like the honda hrv the toyota corolla cross this vehicle should sell like hotcakes for them the sportage make sure to check out my hybrid review of the sportage screaming deal great hybrid overall very affordable, up 37%. This is their cash cows. You'll find out with how the volume that they're selling here in a little bit. The Soul, up 26%. You know, this is right on the coattails of them killing all the fun in the Soul. There's no more manual transmission in it. There's no more 1.6 liter turbocharged engine that I'm aware of. So they've really limited it and streamlined it, I guess, for the mass consumption. And I guess that's doing well for them. The Forte, we need more affordable cars just like the Soul, right? Forte up 20%, Telluride up 18%. And the Telluride is built here in North America and they're able to produce these at higher volume seemingly than what we see in the Palisade uh, from the South Korean built Hyundai. Sorento three row crossover, kind of similar to the Hyundai Santa Fe, but the Santa Fe only has two rows in our market. Anyways, that's up 10%. Kia Nero. Make sure to watch my review in the Nero. It's like a Prius competitor with a lot more space. Not nearly as sexy. It's pretty dorky, to be honest, but super efficient, very affordable. The plug-in hybrid is what I tested recently. It's not a good buy for how much it costs, in my opinion, but it was a great car, just not priced right. All right, so their electrified sales are also up 40%, and sales of Kia's SUVs have increased 25% over the first six months of last year. 
Kia's electrified model is at 40%, but it's not in the name of fully electric. It's going to be more so of their hybrids as well as plug-in hybrids. Their EV6, I think, is down on the year, but we should see that here in a little bit. All right, let's look at the sales here. Now, in typical Kia fashion, they actually do not give us the percentages. So I did my own spreadsheet. So let's start with the Kia EV6. It's actually down 33% on the year. What makes matters worse, it's actually down a little bit more in the month of June compared to last June. Kia Rio also down more on, in this month of June than it's actually doing the, this year. So doesn't look good for these two models and availability the rest of the year, to be honest, but hopefully things change. Kia Forte up 11% in June and up 20% on the year so far. Kia K5, it's actually up on the month surprisingly despite being down 13% on the year. Kia Stinger, rest in peace. Don't really want to talk about that. It's a sore subject. Kia Soul, up 5% on the month, up 25% on the year. So it's starting to cool off on production there. The Kia Nero Hybrid up 83% on the month of June and up about 9% on the year. So is it possible they're allocating some of these hybrid batteries for the Nero, the Seltos, the Sportage, um, from the EV6, it's absolutely possible that they're using those minerals supplies to supply their hybrids. That's my theory. I'll let me know down below what you guys think. Why is the EV6 down and these models up so much? Are they apportioning those batteries for the hybrids? All right. Kia Sportage actually down on the month, but look, it's up 37% on the year. Sorento down on the month. It's up 10% on the year. Telluride up on the month. They keep smashing this vehicle out of the park. I saw one yesterday in like a dark red. I'm like, that's a good looking vehicle. The front bumper is a little weird and they made the lights subjectively worse compared to the pre-refresh model I'm comparing to, but it's still a very handsome SUV all overall and it's up 18% on the year. Carnival up 33% on the month, up 74% on the year. So so we're looking at an increase of 18% year over year for Kia, but growth in June isn't nearly as impressive as the year over year growth. So look to be year over year growth, maybe around 15%, maybe slightly less by the time we hit the end of 2023. Let me know down below if you have a Kia or if you consider buying a Kia and let me know which models are most interesting to you from the super fast EV6 GT to the affordable Seltos and Kia Soul, for example. All right. I wanted to mention this real quick. There's some shakeup in the management here at Toyota North America. Mike Swears is getting a promotion. Susan Elkington is stepping down and away from uh, her role at the biggest Toyota plant in the world, but she's actually getting a promotion uh, and is going to be handling battery electric vehicle production and supply. Now, the Kentucky plant, we already know it's getting one three row EV, but I'm hearing things that it's going to be producing more than just one EV there, possibly by 2025. So stay tuned. Can't say too much, but Yes, things are things are getting exciting in terms of battery electric vehicles being made by Toyota here in North America. Uh, Carrie Creech is, is taking over for Susan uh, to, to lead Kentucky in the era of electrification as well. On the Mazda front, Mazda's finally let the dog down. The CX-9 is officially canceled. Um, and uh, it was a great vehicle. It actually got more popular as it got older just because I think the appetite here in North America for three row vehicles kept going up and the Mazda CX-9 benefited from that. And it's a pretty darn good vehicle overall. The CX-9 is just better. It's not quite as refined at this point in time, but it's more fun to drive. The powertrains are definitely better. We just need to smooth out a couple things on the CX-90 and then I won't be looking back at the CX-9 at all. And I didn't mention this, but the MX-30 is now in production as a plug-in hybrid or you could say a range extender. So that means the rotary is back in production for the first time in 11 years since the RX-8 was discontinued. That's pretty exciting news. Hopefully we get an actual vehicle powered by this rotary engine that's not just a range extender to top off a battery and whatnot. But anyways, I'm getting it there. Thank you guys for watching. Can't wait to see your comments down below on the rise of Kia. They're crushing it. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves and peace.